It's a question suburbs often grapple with. When lot sizes vary and some of your city leans closer to rural life, when is it okay to allow the keeping of chickens and bees? The city of Plymouth tackled the question of backyard birds and bees this week. Plymouth City Council members called it an emotional issue with households for and against. A statistically relevant city flash vote survey showed that 53% of Plymouth households would be okay with chickens, while 34% were against. Plymouth Mayor Jeffrey Washi grappled with the issue of property owners' rights versus the rights of neighbors. It's an emotional issue. That's what I learned the most of. That this is for people, especially that on one extreme that want to have bees and chickens, it's very emotional for them. But it's also likewise the people that don't want to look across their property yard and see a chicken coop, it's emotional for those people as well. So um, I don't know if it will make anybody happy tonight one way or the other. <laughs> After an hour and a half discussion, the Plymouth City Council ultimately voted to approve chickens on a 4-3 vote. The approval comes with restrictions and those include a maximum of six hens allowed. There are also limits on how big a chicken coop and run can be and where it can be located. Those keeping chickens must also pay a $100 licensing fee on their initial application and then complete a course on chicken keeping. City leaders say any potential problems would be solved on a per complaint basis, with one city council member making a plea to residents. We keep our tradition of treating our neighbors very well and tolerable and, and not make this something that uh, you have to call the city on every time. The chicken ordinance will take effect July 1st. It was a different outcome for the bees, however, in another close vote. The city council voted four to three against the keeping of honeybees. According to the city's survey, more residents actually supported the keeping of bees than they did the chickens, with 60% in favor and 27% against. Still, a beekeeping ordinance failed. Mayor Washi and Council Members McGregor, Davis and Prom voted against. The Robbinsdale School District is taking a look at school start times. The school board voted to change school start times, but they haven't announced when it will happen. There are some virtual meetings coming up where parents can learn more. Robinsdale Schools isn't alone in changing start times. The Wyzetta District tackled this issue five years ago. Education Minnesota has released the names of 75 teachers who are candidates for Teacher of the Year, and we have several from right here in our area. The Anoka Hennepin School District has a few teachers on the list and one from Champlin Park High School. Jamie Wise is a special education teacher there. There are three teachers from the Osseo School District. Chris Holson is the drama teacher at Birch Grove Elementary. Peter Pearson teaches fourth grade at Fernbrook Elementary. And Jessica Stewart is a social studies teacher at at Osseo Senior High. From the Robinsdale District, Katherine Nealon teaches at Armstrong High School. And finally, from the Wyzetta District, France Roberts is a first grade teacher at Meadow Ridge Elementary. The semifinalists will be narrowed down in just a few weeks. In honor of Black History Month, Hennepin Technical College will have graduates share their personal stories with the goal of lifting up others. Five black alumni from Hennepin Tech will discuss their academic and career journeys during a Zoom event on Thursday, February 18th. All of them landed in higher wage and in-demand technical careers. They believe others like them can have those opportunities too. Um, some of the statistics and some of the data indicates that uh, everyone's more likely to pursue a career if they're exposed to it at some point in time and they can picture themselves in that career. And I just wanna bring that to my local community and show them that, hey, you know, don't limit yourself to only one type of career because you don't see yourself in that career. Hennepin Tech is one of the most diverse college campuses in the state. More than 98% of Hennepin Tech students report they have received a position in their career when they graduate. You can find out more information on ccxmedia.org to sign up for the Black Rising in Minnesota Workforce event. If you are into music, you can discover a new Minnesota artist for free by tapping into a program at the Hennepin County Library. It's called Minspin. And if you look at the numbers, people are using the service too. In 2020, more than 31,000 songs were streamed or downloaded from the Minspin website. That topped the previous year by 87%. And as reporter Neil Persley tells us, the door is now open for new music by a local artist. 
The Hennepin County Library System's Men's Spin program recently turned four. The young but growing online site is designed to highlight Minnesota music artists of all stripes, from classical to country and everywhere in between. It started back in 2017, uh, and then we, so we're actually in our fourth sort of iteration of it. So our fourth batch of musicians have been released. The Minnesota music culture is rich and abundant and provides the growing Minspin site with a steady diet of musically nutritious fare on which to grow. Altogether we have over 300 albums. This particular um, release was over 90 albums. Each year, a different panel curates more Minnesota artists and music into the site. The panel of curators changes each year, further ensuring an eclectic selection. Just a diverse uh, pool of not only musicians that we have in our collection, but also we want diverse perspectives evaluating the selections, the submissions as well. Currently, the call is on for new artists and music to be added to the site. When the submission period opens, you upload a song. You have to be an artist that currently resides and performs in, in Minnesota. Other than that, there aren't too many other requirements. All the information you will need is on their website. The FAQ button will provide answers to many of your questions, and all you need to do to listen is go to the Minspin website and start clicking. At the Minspin website, Neil Persley, CCX News.